We continue our 12 in 2012 series tonight looking at prospective Republican presidential candidates. This evening, someone who has built his reputation quietly. Okay, go ahead. The governor is answering the phone here. Hello. Most of you probably never heard of Tim Pawlenty before 2008. The popular Minnesota governor was reported to be at the top of John McCain's short list to be vice president. McCain, of course, opted instead for a dark horse with unexpected star power. Were you disappointed that you weren't chosen as John McCain's running mate? <laughs> you know, I, I really admire and respect John McCain. I would have been honored to have been chosen, but I'm not the kind of person who has those kinds of regrets and looks back. Political analysts say it's easy to see why Pawlenty was near the top of McCain's list. When Pawlenty took over the governor's office in 2003, Minnesota was facing a $4 billion budget shortfall. That amounted to nearly a fifth of the state's $22.5 billion total budget. Minnesota's left-leaning legislature wanted to raise the state's gas, alcohol, and income taxes. Pawlenty refused. I wish I could tell you it was all reaching across the aisle with some great bipartisan uh, you know, charm and getting along. There was some of that, but a lot of it was just a hard slog. I mean, we had shutdowns and special sessions and lawsuits. I personally unallotted $3 billion out of the budget myself. Most came from slashing transportation, welfare, and other state services. I mean, what I stand for, what I've argued for, what I believed in, what I've gotten done in Minnesota, you know, goes headlong into most of Minnesota's history and most of Minnesota's culture and traditions. Just this past fall, Pawlenty was one of only four governors in the country to earn an A grade from the libertarian Cato Institute, which called him a frugal budgeter. The Washington Post called him a top contender to reshape the GOP. Tim Pawlenty is running for president. We know that. Uh, he's doing everything you need to do in the traditional manner, going around and talking to groups and visiting all the key early states. You've traveled frequently to Iowa and New Hampshire. You've hired a staff in Iowa. Are you running for president? I haven't decided that yet. Uh, I'm certainly open to it, but I haven't ruled it in or out. In August, he and his wife Mary went to the Iowa State Fair, a stop for any 2012 contender. And he's done more than campaign with local candidates. Pawlenty has three separate political action committees that donated to a staggering 160 candidates nationwide leading up to the midterm elections. That's 160 favors he can call in if Pawlenty decides to run in 2012. Do you think that the mindset for American voters has changed in two years since 2008's election of Barack Obama? No question. I think the uh, 2008 mindset in terms of the election was one of uh, just change for change's sake. I don't think they really, uh, you know, were thinking about some of the things that unfolded beyond 2008 that we needed a different kind of leadership for. And so since then, the public clearly has said President Obama and the Pelosi Reid led Congress has overplayed their hand. What do you think is the most important foreign policy issue the country faces? Well, there's no question that the United States faces a number of national security threats, but the situation in the Middle East, the wars uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, continue to be loom large. And so I've been to Iraq five times. I've been to Afghanistan three times. I've been all over the Middle East. I've uh, been to China three times. But in my view, the, the number one issue facing the United States of America is making sure that America is secure and that we're respected around the world. President Obama sometimes seems to confuse that need and strategic objective with his desire to be popular. Paul Ente also thinks the debt is endangering America's future. Are there specific programs you could see right now that you would just chop? I think, Brett, Obamacare is one of the worst pieces of legislation in the modern history of the country. It is going to increase uh, health care spending, not decrease it. It's going to uh, inflate the deficit, not decrease the deficit. Governor Pawlenty has been compared and makes the comparison himself to Ronald Reagan, mostly because he has stuck to governing conservatively in a liberal state. But many analysts say he lacks Reagan's charisma and star appeal. A political scientist at Carleton College said this, this is not a fellow who is going to come across as strikingly charismatic. People see that he's smart and competent, but there's not much sizzle. 
How do you respond? To well, that? we've seen sizzle in the current president, and then I so I think people there's a time in history where sometimes uh, entertainment or you know drama is more important. There's other times when substance and uh, track record and, and results are more important. And right now, I'd put my record up against any governor in the country. People say Tim Pawlenty is a vanilla candidate. Well, guess what? Vanilla is a popular choice of ice cream in America, and so when it comes to the presidency, uh, people. You know, they may like other candidates, they may get more excited about other candidates, but when you look at who you want sitting in the Oval Office uh, with their hand on the red button, uh, you, you know, you tend to like candidates who are, uh, come off as competent and uh, cool. So I think as to the people who will be the potential ultimate contenders, you know, that's, I won't name names, but if you look at some of them, I'm at least as exciting as them. <laughs> If by 2012, voters are looking for competence over charisma. You guys change the oil every day, don't you? Palenti will likely be there. Good to see you. Thank you. Our 12 and 2012 series continues Tuesday with a look at South Carolina Senator Jim DeMint.